Good morning and welcome once again to the International Circus Hall of Fame video series on some of the great circus people enshrined in the Circus Hall of Fame. Jeremiah, a.k.a. Jerry Mugovan, was born May 17, 1873 in Knightsville, Indiana to Irish immigrants Jeremiah Mugovan, who was a railroad worker, and Bridget Maloney Mugovan. The family would later relocate to Terre Haute, Indiana, where Jerry was to attend the St. Patrick's School. Once he grew up and started looking for ways to make money, he was hired as a candy butcher on the St. Louis, Iron Mountain, and Southern Railway. Jerry's first job in the circus was on the John Robinson Circus. His first season in the business saw him learning a lot about the business of running a circus by selling tickets, working in the dining car, and helping out front of the show with the advance crew. He moved his career onto the Sanger and Lentz Traveling Menagerie, where he would meet a man that would soon become his best friend for the rest of his days, Albert C., a.k.a. Burt Bowers. Both of them stayed together as they toured with the Sands and Astley Circus, the Sells and Gray Circus in 1900, and then joining the Great Wallace Circus for the 1901 and 1902 seasons. Joining the Great Wallace Circus was a huge blessing in disguise as Ben Wallace took a liking to Jerry Mugovan. That would prove to be very fruitful in the years to come. Although they were only with Ben Wallace for a couple years in 1903, they pooled their hard-earned money that they had saved and bought a small circus from Bill and Frank Smith that was called the Howe's Great London Shows for a small sum of $3,000. Taking their newly named show, the Great Van Amberg Shows, out in 1904, Jerry Mugovan had become an owner of a circus at the young age of 31. At the close of the 1906 season, Ben Wallace negotiated a deal that brought him the Carl Hagenbeck Trained Wild Animal Circus. He combined the titles into the Hagenbeck Wallace Circus. Ben knew the circus business very, very well. He knew it well enough to hire Jerry Mugovan away from his very own show to come back and run the Hagenbeck Wallace Circus for him. So the 1907 season saw Burt Bowers remain with their circus and Jerry Mugovan came to work for Ben Wallace. Jerry Mugovan and Burt Bowers saw their hard work paying off with continued success. In 1911, they bought the Dode Fisk Circus. In 1912, they bought the famous Robinson Circus. And by 1916, they had negotiated the purchase of the old family-operated John Robinson Circus. Mugovan's care for his workers was unceasing. During the flu epidemic of 1918, every worker was given medical care and hospitalization. In the event of a death, he was given a decent burial. A local physician said that he had waited on scores of poor people and Mugovan had paid the bills. Following the end of the 1918 season, the Hagenbeck Wallace Circus, which was based out of West Baden, Indiana, was sold at a receiver's sale. Jerry Mugovan and Burt Bowers bought the show that really taught them the art of running a circus. The 1919 season saw Jerry Mugovan and Burt Bowers put three different circuses out on the road that year. They had made arrangements with their friend Ben Wallace to lease the Peru Winter Quarters, and this served as their home base. Ed Ballard came on board as one of the partners after the purchase of the Hagenbeck Wallace Circus in 1918. The three of them bought the Sells Floto Circus on November 25, 1920. The rights to use the Buffalo Bill title were secured in the purchase and were added to the Sells Floto title in years to come. During the winter of 1920-1921, they also bought the Yankee Robinson Circus. On April 28, 1921, Ben Wallace passed away. Later in 1921, the American Circus Corporation was formed in the state of Delaware. On October 21, 1921, 
The newly formed American Circus Corporation bought the 600-acre Ben Wallace Winter Quarters and the train facilities in North Peru for nearly a half a million dollars. In 1922, they acquired the rights to use the famous circus title, the Golmar Brothers Circus, under a five-year lease from the Golmar family. They also began an immense redevelopment of the circus winter quarters with many new buildings being constructed. Jerry Mugovan would basically stay in Peru throughout the years of 1922 and 1923 as he personally supervised the construction of the new winter quarters. His palatial home was built in Peru around this time. Jerry Mugovan served as vice president of the Showman's League out of Chicago in 1922 and under a lot of pressure from fellow showmen was elected president in 1924. Jerry Mugovan also bought control of the Wabash Valley Trust Company in June of 1924 when he bought the shares owned by Charles Fuller, William Fuller, and Clara Fowler. It's interesting to note that this was the very same bank that Ben Wallace had started in 1904. Later, he combined it with the Citizens National Bank. He also donated $40,000 to build the Catholic school at the corner of 5th and Cass Street. By 1928, a new wave of construction was beginning with new training barns, horse barns, and wagon sheds being built in anticipation of not using the West Baden Winter Quarters anymore. And in 1928, they bought the Al G. Barnes Wild Animal Circus that was out on the West Coast. 1929 would be the year the circus world would be stunned over and over again. The American Circus Corporation bought the Spark Circus. They had been the owners of more circuses than anyone in this country, and this added to their account. Now they had the Spark Circus, the Algie Barn Circus, the John Robinson Circus, the Sells Floto Circus, and the Hagenbeck Wallace Circus all on the road. They also secured the opening in Madison Square Garden in 1930 when they stole the spot away from the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. John Ringling couldn't live with that and demanded to sit down with the owners of the American Circus Corporation. John Ringling asked Mugovan to come to New York. Mugovan declined, so Ringling came to Peru. A deal was worked out to buy or sell, and on September 6, 1929, on the toss of a coin, the Mugovan properties were acquired by Ringling for $1.7 million. Just a few weeks later, on October 24, 1929, the stock market started to tumble and the great stock market crash of 1929 signaled the beginning of a 10-year depression in the United States that devastated companies throughout the entire Western Hemisphere. With the sale of his beloved circuses, good fortune had shone down upon Jerry Mugovan once again. Unfortunately, Jerry Mugovan didn't live to enjoy the successful retirement he had earned. He died unexpectedly on January 22, 1930 in Harper's Hospital in Detroit, Michigan following two simple hernia surgeries. He was 56 and he is buried today in Peru. With the sale of the American Circus Corporation and his untimely death, the end of one of the greatest circus dynasties had come to a close. Jerry Mugovan was inducted into the Circus Hall of Fame in 1986.